to a new year in the name of Jesus. Yeah, by your own time, it may not be 12 midnight yet, but as you all know, we don't keep those traditions. It is the traditions that have put Lagos in trouble. It is the traditions that put Ogun State in trouble. In fact, I just read before I came here now that anybody that does crossover in, in Lagos will be fined half a million naira. Where do you have to where do you have to meet 12 midnight? Is it compulsory? Praise God. But we just want to follow tradition, what we used to do. Half a million. That's what the governor just told them. That if you do watch night service in Lagos, you will pay half, mil half a million. And this evening, they just announced it. It to be successful. Anyway, I pray God will give the church understanding in the name of Jesus. So, I want to just uh, greet you and thank everyone who have made praying to the womb of the month a success these 10 years in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you abundantly. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, let me also say that in the, on page number two, on page number two of the, of, the, of the journal, you will see there, join the 40 day fasting and prayer. Monday, January 4 to February uh, 12, or maybe something like that. I don't know whether that is very accurate. Uh, the number 40 speaks of trials, temptations, and tests. So, it is the number of the overcomer. Where Israel spent 40 years in the wilderness, Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness to be tested, to be tried, and he overcame in all three dimensions of testing. I pray in this life, you will overcome your tests. You will overcome your trials. You will overcome your temptations. So, fast and pray about your future. Fast and pray for consistency and results. Fast and pray to represent Jesus. Not only to represent your church, but represent Jesus, who he was when he was alive. So fasting and prayer is Mondays and Fridays, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And fasting and prayer all other days, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. And for the elderly and not so strong in health, please ask your medical doctor for advice. Then I want to stress something in 2020, 2021. And that is the message that God gave me when we started. And that is the message of sonship. A son is no longer a child. A son is an heir and can represent his father. Sonship is coming to full stature, which is not a state of being but you attain a situation where you are grown up like your father and you are called a son. And you are able to represent him as he sends you. As he sends you. As he sends you to do a particular job or an assignment. And you do it as he will do it. That is what sonship means. That is why the Jews wanted to stone Jesus and kill him because he said he makes himself equal with God. And to them that was blasphemy. And of course it was blasphemy in their time and in their day. And they didn't want to hear anything like that. So fast and pray to be like your father God. And pray you will not shy away from that goal in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So prayer and fasting is necessary, needful for us. Now, I also want to talk to you about the journal. That's the number three things, thing I want to talk about. If you look at the journal, you see that it is heavier than before. You also know that the number of pages have increased. Why? Because this year, we want to increase the devotional aspect. We want to add the devotional aspect of 
they pray in the morning so that when you wake up you are not turning all over the bible with looking for where to read but you can have a devotion from the booklet itself apart from the prayer points that are raised and so we want to add the devotional from now on from now on now what caused it what the lord told me he said i'm going to teach you like i taught paul in ephesians and i'm going to explain to you so you can explain to the people of god so what i've shown here for 30 days is just ephesians chapter 1 verse 1 to 6 that took 30 days to explain and you will see it there the gifts of sonship every morning when you wake up you will have something to agitate your mind and get so that you can be like jesus those qualities in christ those qualities in jesus that must enter my life and enter your life is what we explained for 30 days in february we will continue we were only able to get up to verse 6 and we will continue from there by the end of the month as Jesus tarries in Jesus' name. That means that as the booklet is bigger, we will need more donation to print the booklet every month. Because the papers have increased, the Naira has fallen, and a lot of things have happened to the economy. And so we need more Naira to, to buy paper in order to do it. At least for ourselves locally. When you talk about internationally, we can easily send it by the post. We can send it by, uh, by internet. We can send it across like that. And people are enjoying it in many, many places. And they are writing to commend what we are doing. And so I want you to just pay attention to the fact that as we will increase the volume, also you understand that it will take the printer more paper to print. Uh, and please don't throw it away because after a few years, you will be able to even have a commentary on a particular book in the Bible that you can put together as, some, as a souvenir or something that is useful for you and your family. The Lord bless everyone who is hearing in the name of Jesus. Uh, I don't know what to say about the radio programs that we normally run. But for the past several months, because of several activities and several expenditure, um, there's, there's a pattern that uh, this uh, congregation always follow. Uh, when you are doing one project, it looks like you are powerless to do another project, uh, which is a big problem. And so I, I found out that the radio program has not been su supported sufficiently in the last several months. And this radio station was even asking us whether we want to stop. Because um, when the time comes, there are people who are listening, and then the space is empty, and they can't get another person to come there. But they just maintain the space for full stature. <laughs> so that's very interesting. But something happened last Sunday. Uh, after the service, a woman waited and said he wanted to see me by fire by force. And then I had to wait and sit down with her. And then she began to tell me that, I'm radio listener. I'm radio listener. And I'm living in a, a Alegongo somewhere. Far, far away beyond the uh, 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 Ijebu Ode bus stop. Beyond that place. Across the express. Into the other side. He said, that's where I live. That's where I come from. But today I made, made up my mind on Sunday. That because of the announcement that there will be program. I have never been here before. In fact, he told me the ordeal he had with taxi man. He told the taxi man, I don't know where I'm going, no. so if you kidnap me, you will be in trouble and God will deal with you. <laughs> I mean, he went to that point. And so the taxi man and those who are in the bus, you know, the taxi encouraged him, encouraged her, and then they dropped her at the roundabout there and then showed her this place. And so she was here throughout Sunday. And then she said, I must see the pastor, the, the, the man that used to preach. And so he saw me and told me all the blessings she was received by radio. And that that's what she listened to every time. That even if she doesn't have lights in that area, she will run and go and buy battery so that she won't miss it. I mean, so it's, it was like her lifeline. 
You know, so I was thinking about all those things that what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So one soul is so important to God. And I'm praying that we also will continue to value souls in the name of Jesus. So I want to encourage everyone who has been giving and donating to the radio program not to forget the Lord will continue to bless us in Jesus' name. We also want to start a second radio program uh, in which many of us will be involved uh, three hours per day online, which means you can listen to it on your phone or you can listen to it by some other device. Uh, we have bought airtime for the whole year and they're giving us three hours every day. And so we will find out, yeah, how we will divide. Yes, thank you. Give, give, give the Lord a big, very good offering. So we're still wondering when it will be best to do it, whether from morning 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. or maybe from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. We don't know the time. But it's you who will tell us what to do uh, when you'll be able to enjoy the time. But we want singing, we want prayer, we want uh, exhortation, we want testimony, we want everything. Everybody here can get on the radio now. Praise God. I said praise God. And they will hear you all over the world. That's the, that's the beauty of it. So nobody is uh, privatizing now. And so God is good. And his mercy endures forever. Say amen to that. Alright, so those are a few things I want to instruct us. And tell us uh, before time runs out. Uh, if I don't remember during the other service, maybe our pastors will remember. But I'm not going to repeat myself uh, on this. I've said what I've said. Let it be transmitted to others. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the, praise the Lord. All right, I'm talking about living at the edge of time. 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 That is what we advertised, and that is what the Lord put in my heart for the end of the year. Living at the edge of time. In Exodus chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12, verse 31 to 36, verse 31 to 36. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, rise up. Now, I want you to notice that this is time. The first sentence I read here said that God called for Moses and Aaron. I mean, a Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron by night time. And he said, rise up and get you forth from among my people both ye and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as ye have said. Also take your flocks and your herds, as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we have all, we are all, we'll be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leaven and neat throats, being bound up with their clothes upon their shoulders. Verse 35. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians for so so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the, the Egyptians. Amen. Amen. Alright, let me briefly say that this for the children of Israel was the edge of time. It was the edge of time. Something new is about to happen and a change is happening and a relocation 
is happening to the children of Israel. And they were to relocate to a new land. They were to relocate to a new place. They were to relocate their place after 430 years. It was the edge of time. Even if you cannot read grammar, what I'm saying now should occur to you that that is a new thing that was happening. And this night that most uh, the Pharaoh told them to go, after all the resistance, after all the obstacles, after all the miracles, after all the things that were happening, he could no longer stop them because they were at the edge of a new era. They were at the edge of a new thing. And so he had to stop them and say, please go. We don't need you among us anymore. Because now, it pleased God to release them. That is the edge of the time that the church is. For those of you that are just reading Revelation to preach about healing, I'm not talking about healing. Amen? I'm not talking about healing. I'm talking about time. Praise God. I said, praise God. For those of you that are just reading inspiration to preach, I'm not talking about preaching. I'm talking about time and session. I'm talking about seasons of our life that we have to comprehensively prepare to leave this world. So listen to your preacher. If you don't listen, I'm sorry, you'll be lost. You'll be found in the right, right, wrong crowd. That is why I have patiently sometimes take my time to explain scriptures. Because I know that some of our minds are not in agreement. Because of what we want to do. The success we want to get. And let me say to you that there is no success anybody here can get that somebody else has not got. But it's time to go home. It's time to go home. Last Thursday, myself and my wife had been taking care of some Anglican priest. And the man departed about five years ago. And last Thursday, we heard she was in the UCH. And that she had been there for four hours. Nobody attending to her. So we had to call one of our great sisters here to please help us. Are you in UCH? She said, yes. Please help us go to emergency unit and go and help us to attend to her which she was kind to do, even though it was time to close. And so I, I dressed up, I ran there. I met this elderly woman in the vehicle. And the doctors were attending to others. And they said, Mama, your case is not as serious as these other ones. Because there were cases of Lassa fever. There were cases of COVID. There were cases, very difficult cases. And so they said, Mama, relax in the car. And uh, we will attend to you later. And so while they were doing that, it was taking long. And mama said, why don't you pray for me and you can be going? So I prayed for her and then I left. Anyway, her sister managed to get her into a world. And then the next day, we went there to visit her. Myself and Pastor Yinka. And we visited her. We, you know, just you know, enjoyed her presence and fellowship with her and prayed with her. And then we left. The next morning, before one o'clock, they said she was dead. Four days ago, a quarter to five this evening, somebody else called me. He said, do you know Brother Tata? I said, yes, I know Brother Tata. Brother Tata was the one that was carrying around my wife when they transferred me to Kano. He said, do you know the wife died uh, Friday? I said, I didn't know. Now, that's the way the world is now. That's the way the world is. Praise God. Now some of you want to hear good news and promises and all these things. Fine. I have nothing against promises. The fact is that reality is that some are going. That's the reality. 
And so a pastor must prepare the mind of his people that a day is coming, you will no longer be here. And we don't want to go to the graveyard and say you are going to go to heaven when you have not gone anywhere. And so it's a problem today among charismatics and Pentecostals. What they preach and what they do. What they say and where they go. It's become a problem. And part of the problem we have, even all over the world, is what I'm just talking about. But we are at the edge of time. In Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3. Reading verse 1 and 2. Because of time. We have read that passage before. So let's just read Joshua chapter 3. Verse 1 and 2. Joshua chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. You will notice again the children of Israel were at the edge of time. It said, Now Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, when ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, and the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place, and go after it. Amen? I said amen. This was another age of time. What they had labored and wandered around for, 40 years, they were just about to cross over again. The way the Lord showed me is this. There were two matchsticks. One matchstick was burning out. Burning the past. And one matchstick was struck and is burning into the future. You know what was? There is a dividing of time where we are now. There is a separation of time where we are now. To go forward in the years to come. Into a new life. And I'll try to describe that life in the natural and the spiritual before I close this evening. But understand that the children of Israel were at a junction near Jordan to step into the promised land. And pray in these coming years, no matter what happens, you will step into your promised land. Say, no matter what happens. I will step into my promised land in the name of Jesus. In John chapter 1, I want to show you another edge of time. In John chapter 1 verse 29. In John chapter 1 verse 29. In John chapter 1 verse 29. John chapter 1 verse 29. John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John said Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Listen to that. The next day, John sees Jesus coming to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, we take it away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not. But that he should be made a, manif a manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. In verse 32, And John bear record, saying, I saw the Spirit of, the, of, of descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. Verse 33, And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit of God descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 
In other words, my ministry has ended. This is another man that has come. And so you find out this was an edge of time. That when Jesus came for water baptism, something different happened to him than happened to others. As you are here tonight, listen, something sudden may happen to you in terms of an anointing that your time is clocked for today. Amen? Three days ago, I was here. And I asked Francis to help me and uh, Pastor Ando Sike to help me to go take the photograph of a tree inside the INEC building there. And I noticed for the last four years that about this time, unfailingly, those three trees inside INEC always bring their royal flowers out unfailingly. And God said, this is Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. He said, what says thou? He said, an almond tree. And he said, that is how my word will be. My word will come to pass. As this tree is accurate to bring out its flowers at the accurate time, that is how the word of God is. It's a seed. It has life inside it. It will prop, it will germinate, it will have life at the right time. That's how it works in the life of people. There may be a word from, for you, a word of God for you, that in 2021, that word will spring forth. That word will come forth. That word will be dated and come forth abundantly for you in the name of Jesus. Remember, the rod of Aaron, how it budded overnight, had flowers, had leaves, and had fruit overnight, is the word of God that was coming to pass. And in the same way, God is saying, this is the man, this is the Messiah that all the prophets have prophesied about. This is the man that everybody has been talking about. And he came to my baptism. Ah, how, how, how glorious. How fortunate. How privileged. I am as John the Baptist that I was standing at the edge of time. I was standing at the edge of time. I'm praying that in your life, you will recognize your edge of time. You will not miss your time. You will not miss your time. You will not miss your time. Did you understand what I said a while ago? I said I stood behind, beside this woman, talking to her, talking to me. But she was a quarter to go to heaven. She was just about to depart from this world. And truly, she was talking to her helpmate. In the hospital where she was, they were sitting together talking, and then she just stopped talking. And that was the end. She didn't have any pain, she didn't have any no issue at 89. No issue. And she just left like that. Just talking. As they were talking, just she just stopped talking. Now, the lady beside her will ever remember. But she didn't know she was standing at the edge of time for the blessing that will come out of that woman's mouth. And so many of us are so casual. When a minister is ministering, we're not listening. We're not listening. We have our own ideas of how things must be done. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Verse 1 to 4. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each 
of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men and from every nation under heaven. Let me stop there. Praise God. I say praise God. That was another dividing line and dividing time for the church. That was another dividing line and a dividing time for the church. They had no warning of what it was. But they just kept on praying. They didn't know what would happen. They were just commanded to pray. And they obeyed. And they went to the upper room and they were praying. I mean, no argument with their savior. Go and pray. Go to the upper room. Just stay there. Pray until the power promise come upon you. And they obediently continued in prayer. And they were praying. And then suddenly there came upon them a rushing mighty wind. And the Bible said they filled all the house. And something like tongues of fire sat upon each one of them. And so we see a necessity for us to be prepared at the edge of time. To be prepared at the edge of time. None of us now can say or take for granted that, okay, you have freedom to do this, freedom to do that. You know what you used to do before? A governor woke up one day and said, you could not do them anymore. What was her response? You just complied. <laughs> you just complied. <laughs> you just agreed. <laughs> In other words, what we used to take for granted before was no longer to be taken for granted. What doesn't used to be precious to us before now became precious. I just gave illustration about the woman that I talked about. But one thing that pained me is the fact that there are a lot of things that have happened as social cleavages in our society, un unbeknown to many of us. About the time that this woman was sick, her children were also sick, and they could not go to visit her. So you see that? At the time she was sick, the children were also sick. They could not go to her. And so when I was inquiring, I was finding, ah, hey, brother so and so, I'm calling the man, what happened? And the man told me his condition and his wife's condition. Ah, I became tender with him. I became very tender with him because, I mean, I couldn't imagine that could happen to me. And then I will have no chance of seeing my mother. Praise God. I said, praise God. So what I'm saying is that there are times in life. And there are seasons in life. And look at our universities. They've been closed now for how many, how many months? What did society do? They folded their hands and went about their business. Their children have been at home doing nothing. They folded their hands. Everything continue as you are. They said the school should close. Nobody should go to school. Everybody folded his hand and did nothing. That's what is happening. Now, when we were just about to do Christmas and everybody, you know, go together, go to the family, rejoice with the family. Oh, they said there is COVID. Oh, they said there's a second strain of COVID. So you can't do it. If you do it, you are in danger of your life. And you are endangering other people. What did the society do? They folded their hands and did nothing. <laughs> praise God. I said praise God. Suppose you wake up next year and they said, government will pay you this particular amount and that's the amount they are going to pay and there is no nothing else what are you going to do suppose they say they are going to pay everybody but what we tell you to do you must do so what are you going to do 
Suppose you wake up next year, this year we are entering, and they told you that there is a reset. Alright? And they say education is parallel. Everybody's child go to a parallel school. No more special school. You go to a particular school, we fund the school, we give the money to the school. So, what are you going to do? What exactly are you going to do? That's the reason, brothers and sisters, that I'm preaching this night. I'm preaching this night because the believers can no longer behave the way they used to behave. They have to operate in a new level, in heavenly places. They have to know where to go, at what time to go there. They cannot just tune their wristwatch and say, I'm going to Bodija. They cannot just tune their radio and say, I'm going to Okiniko and then just going around with four eyes and three e and two ears like every other natural man and behaving natural. Praise God. I said praise God. It's important to tell you because a lot of us are not aware of our circumstances, of our surroundings and what is happening in our surroundings. And I'm so sorry. The church refused to become spiritual. The church refused to become spiritual. They like to do it at the level of the natural man. They like to act at the level of the natural man. And they, there is no coordination in the church. <laughs> so, I'm believing God that you, in the day of your trial and your testing, Jesu. I said, Watayo Loruko Jesu. So it is a time that there is an epoch time. It's a new era time. It's a time when a, a, a shift of atmosphere is happening all around you. All right? Activities are plenty. News are plenty. In a single day, you may have all manner of news at, at your fingertips and all of them confusing. Imagine now when we plan this meeting. Some leaders came to me and said, uh, I don't know how they put it, but they say, what time? I said, what time did we do it last year? Are you asking me what, what time? So I knew that some people have introduced doubt. So I said, we are going to have 5 p.m. and we are going to have 9 p.m. That's what we did last year. That's what we did the other year. That's what we did the other year. That's what we did the other year. I said, that's what we are going to do. But I'm not one of the leaders that told me that uh, let's do midnight service. That's whatever. I said, no, we are not doing church growth. We're not using our method again. I did it before. I was, I, I was with it in a sheet there. I knew what methods we use. I said, we're not doing that. So this afternoon, news came and said, the Oyo State canceled the crossover night, crossover service. I said, they didn't cancel our own. We are going to do it by five o'clock. So our own has not been canceled. Praise God. I said, praise God. When we were going to do, um, what do you call it? Advancing World Missions Conference. Didn't we have the same problem? The brethren said they don't know whether it will hold or not. I said, it will hold. They said, what time? You choose the time. The time you choose, it will hold. We came here on Monday. The, the streets in town were closed. On Tuesday, the, street, the streets in town were closed. On Wednesday, the streets were open. We did our conference Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The streets became closed again on Monday. Do you think God knew that we were going to hold this meeting or not? All that should have taught us as leaders about time. But we were not learning any lessons. So that's what I'm talking about. Who asked us to choose that time? We prayed. I told the brethren, oh, they said, well, something. I said, I have prayed. I said, I told you I fasted. When you did 40 days fast, I did 50 days. 
And only did 50 days from 1st of July to July 31. I fasted another 31 days. So I said, the conference will hold. Praise God. I said, praise God. What was I doing? What I was doing was that I was acting on behalf of everybody. I'm not trying to take any glory. Because I didn't do the conference alone. I wasn't the one that was acting here and doing this. and do I wasn't. I didn't contribute all the money. So I was just doing my part as the leader. Praise God. In the same way, when things are like this in society, those of us that are leaders, we must represent the people. We must lead by counsel. We must lead by prayer. You must lead by fasting. You must lead by instruction. You must lead by counsel. You must lead everywhere you can. Lead by counsel. Praise God. I said praise God. That's important because we are at the age of time. Things are very edgy. Things are very, very edgy. There are things I can't I, I, I thank God for Professor Mackinde. <laughs> he came to visit me yesterday and we spent almost one hour talking. <laughs> and I said, sir, what I want to tell you, I can't say it on the pulpit. <laughs> and so I had a big time to, to talk with him. But one of the things we concluded as an, an, an elder is the fact of the matter is that the word of God will come to pass. No matter what the devil does. The word of God will do what? Come to pass. But brothers and sisters, let not only agree. Acquaint yourself with that word of God. And there are plenty of Bible verses. Acquaint yourself with the one that is in time. Amen? I said amen. Acquaint yourself with the one that matches the day and the time. And it is vital. That's where we are going now. By the grace of the living God. So when you visit, when you, and God visits you with fresh anointing, then you know something is about to happen in your life. Alright? When it is there, there is a change in the, in the heavenlies. And you are able to sense that there is a change in the heavenlies. You are very happy. You are so happy. You are so happy. You are so happy. I mean, you are so happy. When God changes your life and you were sinning before and you, you stop sinning, when you, you were doing things that were wrong before and God, you, God stopped you and you stopped doing those bad things and you know that God has visited your life and you know that you have crossed from something to something else and your life is becoming sweeter and sweeter. So shall our life be in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is time for God to seriously announce to us, to his people or repentance. That's one of the big words I want to use. Because there is no bigger word in the Bible than repentance. To call us to repentance. What do I mean by that? To call us to repentance. To call us to repentance. What do I mean by repentance? If you have a young child and a little baby and that baby has grown Two years, three years, four years. You don't use the same baby clothes for that, for that child. You have to repent and change the clothes of this young boy at the age of one. He's now age two and he's grown up. You change the baby dress to age two and age three and age four. And you begin to wear good shoes for this boy at age five. At age, age four, then you change the dress of this boy constantly, constantly. That's the meaning of repentance. As you grow, you repent from your old life. As you grow in Christ, the old things you, you used to do, you do them no more. Praise God. I said, praise the name of the Lord. You know, but a lot of people are still doing the same thing. And they are counting years. And they say, I've been in Christ for 30 years. But you are not growing. Hello. I said hello. And I'm agitated about that. And so God is saying to us, we need repentance in the church. Not just our church. The church as a whole. I mean, you can imagine the whole church in Nigeria. Imagine our circumstance. Imagine our situation. Imagine the things surrounding us. Imagine the, the conditions that we, the church found itself in the last 20 years. With all manner of preaching. 
with all manner of demonstration, with all manner of illustration. <laughs> and somebody asked me, all those people that were falling down everywhere, when COVID came, where was they falling down? Where was the anointing to fall down? What happened? I mean, the unbelievers were asking questions. And you can't ignore them. Praise God. I said, praise God. That ought to make the church to think. Was all a show? Was it a show? Or it was real? So, brothers and sisters, hear me very well. This time, things that were doctrinal to us have to become reality. Amen? Amen. Things that were what? Doctrinal to us must become reality. For instance, if I say I'm accepted in Christ, that's doctrine. Amen? <laughs> I said amen. That's doctrine. Until somebody challenges you, and he challenges you with a circumstance and a situation, and it really tests whether you feel accepted or not accepted or rejected. And you are in a service or in a congregation like this. And then one fee, a be or la, a be whatever, and then they jump over you. Maybe by mistake. They wanted to award one prize at the end of the year to some people. And then they didn't remember you. And you were not awarded. And then you go home. And you are saying, well, all that I did, didn't they see me? Praise God. I don't know whether you did that. I wasn't in church, but it looks like I overheard Reverend Fulani making an announcement. But if it didn't happen, forgive me. But it happens every year. Eh? It happened. Eh? Let's say somebody now was not called. Praise God. Somebody was not called. And he goes home saying that, ah, you know that was, he doesn't feel accepted. But the Bible already said you are accepted in the beloved. Praise God. You are accepted in the beloved. See, when I'm not accepted in that place, who said so? But you are accepted in the beloved. Sir, please come, sir. God bless you, sir. Man of God. You see me and him like this. Let's say he is Esau and I am Jacob. Amen? He is firstborn. And I am the twin. Are you with me? And so, he is the one rightly honored to be firstborn. And so, he will get double portion, right? Are you with me? And so, unfortunately, I had my mother had gone to prophet. And the prophet had said that I will be the, 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 the one who will own the throne. But he didn't know. Are you with me? And so, when his husband now called my brother to come for, and make venison and food for him that they will eat and his heart will be happy and they will bless him. The mother had and then called me and said, you run quickly. Don't go foul. Go to the back of the house. Get the uh, sheep and then dress it and then come quickly. And then we'll do this thing. But the, 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 the animal skin that you took away, we will use it to cover your hands. Eh? Praise God. I said, praise God. And so they did coni coni and then eh, the old man, even though he was blind, he was talking. Huh? And Jacob was talking. And he said, are you really Esau? He said, yes, I'm Esau. But let me touch you. And then they touched the man. And he was hairy like, like Esau. He said, yes, you are hairy, but the voice is the voice of Jacob. But the skin is the skin of uh, Esau. Anyway, no problem. I'm going to bless you. And he blessed him. Amen. Thank you, sir. Give him a clap of friends, sir. What am I saying? Amen. When the father wanted to give the blessing, eh, he was accepting his, his, his Jacob in Esau. So Jacob was accepted in Esau. And Esau was forget, forgotten. 
Amen. Are you with me? Now you say that's not that's not good. That's not good. Okay, I can understand you. I'll soon get you now. You will now say it's good. Because every time you stand before God, God does not see you, He sees Jesus. If He were to see you, ah, your problem will be plenty. He will not even listen to you. That's what unbelievers don't understand. And that's even we ourselves don't understand. Even when we come before God, we don't understand that we are not coming in our own name. We are coming in the name that is above every name, Jesus. And that we are accepted in Christ Jesus. So we are accepted in the beloved. We are not accepted in ourselves. Just as Esau, I mean Jacob, was accepted in Esau, so are we accepted where? Because it was Esau that had the right. It was Jesus that had the right. And therefore we are not qualified. And therefore we go through Jesus who is qualified. Just as Jacob went through Esau that was qualified. Are you with me? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. A lot of us do not recognize that. That we hide in the Savior. We hide behind the Savior. I'm not saying we are going around and committing sin. That's not what I'm talking about. But all our righteousness is like filthy rags. Amen? I mean, you don't remember that scripture. All our righteousness are like what? They're like filthy rags. And so we have to come in the robe of the Savior. We have to come in the name of the Savior. We have to come in the name of the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings for us to be accepted. And now the Bible says that we are accepted in the Beloved. Praise the Lord. That is where the church needs to repent. That's where the church needs to get. That Don't just go around like every other person condemning yourself in the streets. When you are challenged, Tell yourself, I'm a child of God. Praise God. I said, praise God. Tell yourself you're a child of God. You're not a child from Dokwemu uh, 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 somewhere. You're not a child from Kosovo local government somewhere. You're not a child from Abba, 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 God somewhere. You're not from Ekboma uh, somewhere. You're not from there. You're from heaven. Hallelujah. Some of us are too conscious of our naturalness. Eh, I am from Ekboma. I am from Kinikon. I am the son and daughter of Kinikon. And then I want embellish it. All your life, what has that given to you? What did you get out of it? At the Agbada you got? Or the uh, Inu that you got? Or the beads that you got? That's, that's what you got. Praise God. And that's what you got. I remember one day one elderly man invited me to Premier Hotel. And I mean, I thought he wanted to do a real bad day to pray. And then I sat down there. And then eventually he brought all these uh, kitty girls. And they were dancing, dancing. Is it Ondo? They were dancing with all these leke and all this. I said, what? This is what this man brought me here for. I said, Mama, my, my wife, please, quick. Let's escape through the back. We are gone. Praise God. He didn't impress me at all. Because you see, the spiritual things that I thought they were going to do was not what they were doing. So I want to say to us, we can no longer be behaving like the ordinary man. That's all I've been telling you. Praise God. We can't continue like that. The revival must come into our life and I pray that it will, be ex it will be exuberant in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear your amen. I said I didn't hear your amen. There are many things I want to say, but I'm limited by time. But hear me, brothers and sisters. No matter what happens, hold to the word of God. Amen. I said, hold to what? The word of God. Because with what is happening, you don't know what else will happen next day. Everybody, the magic date now is April. Everybody will be okay in April. Until April, everything will still be locked down. Uh, until everybody get vaccinated. And the people that are vaccinated say they can't vaccinate until 2021. So, for how long? Praise God. Why do you? Why, 
I pray that God will help us as a nation to stand up in the mighty name of Jesus. I didn't hear your amen. So, those of you that are doing things that God does not like, please repent. Please repent. Because the time is short. Please repent. Change your ways. Change your behavior. Change your life. Change your attitude. Let the Holy Spirit change you. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is very important. And I want to please plead with us. Those who believe in uh, maybe believe in certain things that oh I must do it this way I must do it. If the Holy Spirit is convincing you, don't do like that that day. Then understand. Praise God. I said praise God. I'm pained about these things. Please don't condemn me. Somebody spoke to me today by phone from England. He said, sir, I was doing it, uh, it, it, uh, an internet program and I was praying. And somebody called me from Nigeria. I said, I enjoyed your program and I enjoyed the prayer. And he said, I am a university lecturer and I am winning souls on this campus. But there is a boat. And then he told him the boat. And the man on the, on the internet counseled him. He said, the matter is not over. He said, I went to our church and I asked them a question. And then they disciplined me before the, because of the question. But that's not even the issue. He said, they were about to go for a retreat. And he called the head pastor. And he said, head pastor, let's pray. Oh, let's pray much oh, before we do this travel. Let's delay a little, maybe just like five hours. They said, no, we're going now, 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 as we used to do. And they went. And they had an accident. And five of pastors died instantly. Where they say they didn't get the money from their own member. I'm sorry. But that's church. That's how church behaves. Those people died on the spot. And they were pastors. And so I want to say that we'll try to lay a foundation that the Holy Spirit lives inside you. You should read the word of God as much as you can, but also have open ears to hear what is the Lord saying. And I pray God will guide you in the name of Jesus. And I pray God will guide you in the name of Jesus. Finally, in Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. I just have very few seconds left. But let me read Daniel chapter 7. And then we be begin to pray. Daniel chapter 7. I'm reading in verse 24. Or maybe from verse chapter uh, chapter 7 verse 21 will be better. Daniel chapter, chapter 7 verse 21. Now I'm, I'm reading this because I want you to be acquainted with what is happening in our time. I have said it before. I will say it again. So that you won't forget. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 21. I beheld... And, this, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it into pieces. Verse 24. And the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and they shall subdue three kings. In verse 25, and he shall speak great words against the most high, and shall wear out the saints of the most high, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. 
<laughs> praise God. I said praise God. So that's three and a half years, or two and a half years, or three and a half years, whatever time it is. But if you are accurate, it said in verse 25, it said, it will give into his hand for a time and times and the dividing of time. So that's three and a half years. One time and times, that's two plus half a time. And so you have three and a half years. Now, that is the time that these things will happen. Now, listen to what he said. These governments will try to change times and they will change laws. Amen? They changed the law of a man and a woman. Didn't they? I said, didn't they? Come to their own homes. In the name of Jesus. That is what will happen. But you have to be prepared. You have to have open eyes. You have to know what you are doing. You have to show that you understand the scriptures and that you are standing here not on your own. You are representing your father here on earth. Praise God. You have to show that you are not just doing religion. And that you are not just interested in going to church and clapping your hands. But that you are signifying you are a child of God and you are here to defend something. And I'm praying that God will help you to stand like that. I didn't hear your amen about that. That is why this matter is serious. That we are standing at a time and as you go forward, things will be like this. You will hear one announcement during the day and hear another announcement during the night. When they said the COVID team, they made an announcement that in um, Yemen today, that there will be no night uh, vigil, there will be no uh, something. Well, the governor said no. There will be prayer. Because how do you have a state where there is no prayer? Amen? So thank God for him. But are you praying for him? Don't you know that he has stepped on some toes like that? By taking that, you are rejoicing. Yes, they allowed us. Hey, praise the governor. Bless the governor. But don't you know the man has stepped on somebody's toe? And very soon you are going to hear something happen in your state. As a revenge. Are you with me? So is the church praying. The church can raise her hands and shout, oh, praise God, that is happening, that's happening. But are you praying for the man? For the decisions he's taking on your behalf? Hello. I said hello, brothers and sisters. These are realities. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about a show. I'm not here for a show. I'm here to declare the word, thus says the Lord. And that as we go forward, to take your next step, pray. Amen? To take your next step, do what? Pray, fast. Don't say, well, hey, I, I won't want to for you. Can you come? Can you come? Uh, I'm sorry, oh. That's your conclusion. But please don't conclude like that. Why? Because you have children. So what future do you want for your children? What future do you want for your relatives? Praise God. I said, praise God. I'm so happy, brothers and sisters. Each time I see our elders here, I'm rejoicing. Why? Because I say, thank God. God has given them long life. Praise God. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Now, you do understand what I've just said. Because you are not thinking from my perspective. The reason why I told you that is that for the fact that there are people who think that as many Africans as are getting older, they are not anymore economically productive. So what are they doing on the earth? Did you hear what I just said? In other words, anybody that is not economically productive should be what? Suppose that somebody took that decision in your family. How would you feel? Hello? So many of us don't know what's happening. But the church must stand. The church must stand. I said the church must stand. I said the church must stand. I said the church must stand. And the word of God will come to pass. 
I said the word of God will come to pass. The word of God for Nigeria will come to pass. The word of God for your family will come to pass. The word of God for you will come to pass. In the name of Jesus, we declare it in Jesus' name. We say it in Jesus' name. We declare it to heaven in Jesus' name. We say that the angels will carry our word and your life will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. What God has stated concerning your life will never miss a spot. What God has com commanded concerning your time and your seasons in this world, it will go accurately in the name of Jesus. And as many people as you can help, you will carry them along. I said 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 you will carry them along. And I'm believing that this coming year will be better than last year for you in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. I just want to thank God that you are here tonight. And anyone who is listening to us anywhere, I just want to thank God that you are hearing and you are listening. I am not a prophet to be telling you that uh, somebody will overthrow somebody in January. I am not that prophet. I don't prophesy things like that. My prophecy is to tell you the times and the seasons. Amen? That's what God sent me to do. He didn't send me to tell you that uh, Joseph Babalala will arise tomorrow. He didn't send me to do that. Are you with me? Sorry, are you with me? That's not my gift. And that's not my area of gifts. So, I don't do that. But, if you listen to what I've said, you will go to the right place at the right time. If you listen to what I've told you, you will be in the, in the place that God meant for you as he designed it for your life. And you will not miss your goals. And you will not miss your time. That's all that I know. And that's what I've told you. And that's what I've said tonight. If you ask me to prophesy who is going to be president of Nigeria in 2021, I'll tell you, I don't know. Somebody asked me whether somebody was going to win election. I said, I don't know. But the only thing I know is this. There are these conditions that must be met before that man can go. And I'm, I'm correct. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. So, I want you to firm your heart. And I want you to firm your mind. And I want you to understand that this season that we are in now is a time that things will be changing from here to there. But please listen. The word of God does not change. Your father is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will guide you every day. He will guide you every hour. He will guide you in and out. No matter what the devil is saying, you will wake up and say, I am a child of God. I know God is going to lead me. I know God is going to help me. I know I'm going to get out of this situation. And def definitely, you will get out. The courage to, ge to get out. There will be others who will rally around you as your brother, as your sister, as your brother, as your sister. And they will gather together with you. And you will get out of every circumstance in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. We have to close now and do communion. And then when it comes to uh, this, the, the other service by 9 p.m. I'm going to share with us what it will take to get through that time. And I believe that we shall be equipped. We shall not be left alone in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, we are going to stand up. We are going to pray. And we are going to tell the Lord that we are grateful that he said, sharing with us the seasons and the times. And that we are not afraid of tomorrow. And that we are not afraid of what the enemy is planning or whatever the enemy may plan. In the midst of it, you and I will rejoice. You and I will rejoice. You and I will rejoice. I say you and I will rejoice. In the name that is above every name. So let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Going forward, can you say with me, Father? In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, mold our hearts to obey you, O God. Every day of our life. 
to be sensitive to your spirit to be sensitive to your direction to be sensitive to the word of the living God. To be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Can we pray that prayer? Can we pray that prayer? It's a very important prayer. I want you to pray that God please mold my heart. Mold my life. So that I will listen to you. I will hear you. I will know your word. I will be strong. I will be standing as your child. I will not be afraid. I will not go under. Whatever is your need in the family. Whatever is your need at home. Whatever is your need in your flesh. Whatever is your need today, tomorrow. That you will not miss that which God has purposed for your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want to pray right now for those of you who came here tonight and you have a burden and you are saying this burden must be lifted. I tell you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, your burden shall be lifted in the name of Jesus. Whatever load you brought here tonight, you will not carry it back to your house. God will show you that he has lifted your load. God will show you that you are no longer the carrier. That God has taken over in your life. And you will trust him that very soon, maybe tomorrow or this night, or you will get a phone call after this place that your burden and your disturbance have been removed in the name of Jesus. There will be many phone calls this year. There will be many people hearing and sharing with you that you have crossed over from your former place in the name of Jesus. Can you raise your hand? You came with a burden. Please let everybody close his eyes. I'm not opening my eyes because I'm not interested uh, in trying to spot you. That's not, my, that's not what I do. I just believe God that what God told me is true. So if you are carrying a burden on your shoulder and you are heavy, you are heavy, you are believing that God will take away this load. God will take away this burden from me and I will no longer be, 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 be burdened and pushed down by it. I will no longer be under the weight of it. But God will shoulder it with me. God will answer me by fire. God will answer me instantly. Lord, you are saying enough. It is today that you must do it. It must not pass into our calendar of 2021. You are saying it must not cross 12 midnight. This is the day that it must be done. I speak concerning every luggage. I speak concerning every weight. I speak concerning every load that you are carrying. Be overthrown in the name of Jesus. Go 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 in the name of Jesus. You that are alive and a bird or an animal on the shoulder of a child of God, go in the name of Jesus. You that are demon spirits, we command you, go in the name of Jesus. Be lifted from there. Be cast into the sea. Be cast into the abyss. Be cast into the wilderness. Never return in the name of Jesus. Let faith come there right now. Let faith come back to the place. Let faith replace the body. Let faith replace that load right now. To lift you up in the name of Jesus. Let me stop and explain. You see, you can open your eyes and put down your hand. You see, when you have fear, for instance, as an example, when you are carrying fear in your heart, because fear is a spirit and is the opposite of faith, when you pray that faith should go, or you pray for somebody and you cast out the spirit of fear, Jesus said in Mark chapter 7 that that place becomes a void. It becomes empty. And this spirit of fear will come back to visit. And if he finds that the place is still empty, 
then he will go and get other demons stronger than himself and they come and the first state of that man is worse than after. So that's what happens in the spiritual realm. So when we pray about something like this, even though it has left, you must immediately replace it by faith. Amen? You must replace it by confidence in God. So that the place will not be empty. And so you become confident in God. It has gone now. It will never come back again. Even if that is the statement you are making, that's enough faith for God to help you. Are you with me? Sorry, are you with me? So that's the transaction that happens. And so I pray right now, those of you that have this burden taking off your shoulder, receive an infilling in the name of Jesus. Receive now. 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 Receive healing. Receive deliverance. Receive an infilling. Receive the power. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive a refreshing. Receive more rain. Receive more refreshing. In the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Where your own is bound by a chain. Where your own is many years. And you have carried that body for so many years. And it's tied to your life. And ingrained in your flesh. And ingrained in your life. Right now. Let all those chains break in the name of Jesus. Let those chains break in the name of Jesus. You chain of death. I command you. Break in the name of Jesus. Shatter in the name of Jesus. You chain of sickness. Break in the name of Jesus. You chain of demonic affliction. Break in the name of Jesus. You time to time visitation. I command you. Break in the name of Jesus. Be made whole. 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 In the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking right now that those of us that have carried a burden, a good burden for a long time, a good burden for something to happen to your brother, to your sister, to your mother, to your father, to your family, to the church of God, or to somebody in the church of God, a burden for marriage, a burden for children, a burden for something that is heavy on your heart. Receive in the name of Jesus. Now, in the name of Jesus. Now, 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 in the name of Jesus. Let there be faith in your heart that what you are asking is done in the name of Jesus. I pray and ask that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you receive double in the name of Jesus. You receive double in the name of Jesus. Wherever you go, let the grace of God dodge your steps for blessing in the name of Jesus. If you receive resistance last year, this year, your door will open. 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 Yeah, it's opening. I can see somebody's door opening. I can see it very wide. Yeah, enter. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can see that. I can see that in front of me. And God is saying that those of you that are still in limbo, let your door open in the name of Jesus. Let God arise. Let your enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Let your enemies be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. Arise and shine. For your light is come. Arise and shine in your place of work. Arise and shine in your family. Arise and shine in your corner. Arise and shine whether you are a messenger or not. Arise and shine in the name of Jesus. I used to hear somebody say that God has favorites. That's not true. That's a lie. Amen. Some people say, I'm God's favorite. 
I'm God's child. I'm God's favorite. It's a lie. God has no favorites. God has assignments. Amen. God has assignment. He gives his assignment to whoever he will. Amen. But a messenger is no better than a managing director in the church. Praise God. I said, praise God. They are not bastards. Messengers are not bastards. They are children of God too. Praise God. I, I said, praise God. That is it. That's true. That doesn't belittle to anybody. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So there is no favorite. There is no favoritism with God. Praise God. But there are some people that, that they, they labor and labor and labor and, and they love God. So you too should labor and love God. And don't say that God loves that person more special than yourself. You have not put effort to draw near God. If you draw near God, he will draw near to you. Can you say amen to that? I said, can you say amen to that? I said that to see this, so say this, that God will lift you from where you are and catapult you to a new situation in the name of Jesus. Now, in the name of Jesus. Now, in the name of Jesus. God will lift you up. God will lift your heart. God will lift your situation. In the name of Jesus, he will not leave you where they are. He will not leave you where you are. He loves you as he loves me. He loves you as he loves Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you faithful father. You are a faithful God. You will not deny anybody here. And you will not abandon anybody here. You are near every one of us. And so help us to draw nigh unto you. And you will draw nigh unto us. Thank you father. I bless your name. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. And everybody said amen. Everybody said amen. Amen. If, you are, if your legs are weak, please sit down. If you are not fasting, you can stand up. If you are strong, uh, like myself, you can stand up. We want to pray and let the uh, deacons and the pastors who help us with the elements... Let them come and share and divide the bread and the wine for us. Praise God. I said, praise God. Uh, please sit down. Please sit down. I'm sorry. Please sit down. I receive instruction. Please sit down. Praise the Lord. Now, we want to take the bread and the wine. Let's remind ourselves why we do it. So many reasons. And every month, I will take a particular reason and I will emphasize it. Sometimes I will emphasize the blood. Sometimes I want to emphasize the bread. Sometimes I will emphasize the body. Sometimes I emphasize some of the reasons why we have to sit down and break bread. But this night, I want to remind you into the coming year that this it's a covenant meal. It's a covenant meal. It's a covenant meal. We take a covenant meal as a reminder. And not only a reminder, but after the pattern of Genesis chapter 13 and 14, particularly chapter 14, where Abraham met Melchizedek. And Abraham gave him tithes of all that he had captured from war. 
And Melchizedek gave him bread and wine. In the Old Testament. Illustrating that Melchizedek was a priest of the heavenly order. And so he offered bread and wine to Abraham. Now, so you see that right from the beginning, the works of God are known to him and what he was going to do in the future. Even though the Jews, they celebrated Passover to signify their liberation from Egypt, as we read in chapter 12 of Exodus this night. Nevertheless, their activity was around legalism. You do for me, I do for you. If you do this, then I reward you like this. That was the kind of exchange that they had. And they had to do everything literally physically. Even until their prophets began to come, they had to obey and look at the letter of the law so closely so that they don't make mistakes. So I can imagine how brilliant Aaron was. Or how brilliant some of his children were. Or even Moses himself, how intelligent and brilliant he was. Not to make mistake in all those laws. When he went into the presence of God to offer something and he didn't make a mistake there. So it was challenging. When Jesus came, he helped us and took our place. And then as he was about to go, in Luke, in the Luke's gospel particularly, the Bible shows us there in chapter 23, when he brought the Old Testament Passover, all right, and they killed the Passover, and he ate the Passover with them. And when that was ended, he then instituted a new one, which is bread and wine, different from the Old Testament eating. Can you say amen to that? Amen. He did that to honor you and honor me. So that even if we don't see him physically, every time we come to communion like this, you will remember that somebody died for you. You will remember that somebody's body was beaten for you. And this is a cross overnight. You are going into next year. And you are going into years ahead. Whether you are a child, whether you are youth, or whoever you are. And so, I want you to take a decision not to return to your former ways. Because if you are going to partake with us in the bread and the wine, you will drink damnation and condemnation to yourself if you are still sinning. If you are still a sinner and you are sinning, you are still in abusive language, to be specific. You are still a cheat. You are still ignorant of those things that the unbelievers around you still do. You do the same thing. And your mind and your heart has never been changed. Even though you go to church. See, when you take the communion, you see, you, 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 you endanger your own life because you are drinking damnation to yourself. That is why when we come together as children of God and we take the communion bread and the communion wine, we make an allegiance to one another, not to betray one another behind. Can you say amen to that? So when we drink from the same cup, you don't become a Judas. Say to your neighbor, you don't become a Judas. You didn't say it very well. I didn't hear you, brothers and sisters. You don't become a Judas in the church. When you take that cup 
and you share it together with me. You don't go betray me somewhere else and speak evil about your brother, about your pastor, or about your brother or sister or sister leader or Bible class leader. You don't go speak evil behind them about them. Because you have broken bread with them. You have shared the same body with them. Because nobody ever yet hates his own flesh. But you love your body and you cherish it. Praise God. So that's why I can't, I mean, I can't go and be speaking evil about my wife. Oh, and I say, well, the matter touched me very well. So, Mohan Rojo, Mohan Rojo, I want to buy a woman there. Because Ronye do me gone. But Ronye say, do me gone. No saying, son, eh, you bring your da, eh, can you come? And then you begin to abuse your wife after you have married for 50 years. 50 years. You are still telling stories. And you share in the cup. Hello. Sorry, sir. Sorry, man. Do you understand? These are principles that are unbroken. That's why in the church we love one another. We are kind towards one another. We help one another when we are capable of doing it. Praise God. I said praise God. Hello. I said hello. That's why I don't borrow anybody any money. Hello. I don't borrow anybody any money. Why? Because if I borrow your money and you don't pay, you stop coming to church. Hello? So if you came to me and you said you want one million, I said I have five thousand. Do you like it? If you like five thousand, I'll give it to you. I have five thousand in my pocket. Take. But I will never ask you again. Praise God. I said, praise God. Now that's life. Because I love you, I only have what I have, and I give you what I have. So if you like it, you take it. If you say it's not enough and you complain, well, that's left to you, but I've done my part. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So, I want to encourage everyone to partake in the bread and to partake in the wine, but with a pure heart.